Imagine being able to take a set of students back in time to the Battle of Gettysburg and be able to hear the sounds and, and see, the, see the men running across the field. Or go and tour the Sistine Chapel with your class where you're actually walking through it, being able to go up close to various paintings and actually take in the entire environment. Or go back several hundred years to when the Colosseum was at its full glory and be able to walk the halls, bumping into other students from other countries and seeing an actual event take place within, within the Colosseum. Well, all of this is possible today with the, with the software and hardware that's available to all of us um, using simple software called gaming software. If we look at education from a macro level, there are tens of millions of students all over the world that already have phones, they've got tablets, they've got laptops, and all of that technology has the power and capacity to be able to save their entire curriculum throughout their entire educational career. And one of the key elements of that technology is that it can all uh, play games. And if you've, asked, if you've asked any parents who have kids, their kids are already very, very good at playing these games. What that means for education is that we, we have a device that's already walking into the classroom that the kid is carrying that can play th this kind of gaming technology. All we need to do is to be able to harness it and apply it to various courses. And in this case, I'm going to be tackling uh, history courses and how we use gaming for history. So the question that comes up when you're thinking of uh, games is, well, why even try and take a game that seems to be disruptive to, to my child and bring it into the classroom? And, and how can I do that? Well, a couple of the really interesting things that you have with, with a lot of gaming technology is that it's immersive. What I mean by that, if we look at this photo here, this is a zoomed back Im image of a city. But within a game, we could walk through the city, we could walk around it, and as you're walking around it, you're experiencing things in a way that you, uh, that's very similar to how you uh, experience things in, in your real life. If you're in a game and you see a door, you know to walk through it. If you're going, and you're, you're going through with your fellow colleagues, you know that when you walk up to another character, you can talk to that character. Now that's really interesting because it, it actually maps itself really well to how our brain works and how our brain records bits of information. If I'd asked people to remember the last time they went to a restaurant, the, they went and visited a friend, um, or their journey to work, chances are in recalling that information, you're not, you're not printing it out in your head as, a, as an A4 piece of paper, you're actually taking yourself back to that restaurant and imagining yourself being at that restaurant and what you were doing at the time. Th this is the type of stuff that, you can, that happens within gaming technology because it's immersive and it's, it's replaying what you're very familiar with. All of this type of learning is called experiential learning. And what I mean by that is that through experience, you're being able to replay what you're doing and doing it in a very, very rapid way. So, the question comes up, well, Chris, that's all very convincing. Uh, it seems like that could work within the classroom, but if I'm a teacher, how do I go from being, talking, on a, talking on a board and talking to my students to actually being able to deploy gaming technology within the environment? That seems like a bit of a stretch, and it seems like it could be something that's very, very hard for me to do. Well, the reality is that a lot of the gaming technology out there, it's as simple as those out there that can create websites now. You can go out there and very easily get things going. The fact is that a lot of game technology that's, that's available targets educators as a way to be able to, to get in there free um, very easily and get yourself going. The second thing is within a game is that you need to be able to do uh, multiplayer. And what I mean by that is that you want individuals being able to go in with each other and interact with each other. Again, with gaming technology, all of that stuff is generally already available to you as an educator. The next thing you need to be able to do is actually go out and find the content. And in a lot of cases, that's probably the hardest thing, because without any content, it, it doesn't mean anything. The person's just walking around within a blank environment. Why I find this really interesting for history is that all you need to do is go out and actually find the model. Um, and in a lot of cases, these models have already been built for you. A great place to, to initially go and find them, if you just go to Google, Google actually has its own model warehouse where various cities throughout the world have already been built, um, ancient historical sites have already been built, and it's simply a matter of taking that and putting it directly into the, to the game software. 
The other really interesting thing that we've found, and a lot of the talks have really touched on the creativity side of students, is that what we find with this technology is the students actually really get engaged in creating the class, not only participating in the class. And what that means is that your ability to be able to get some models and either leverage their, their enthusiasm around those models to configure it, or even create models for you, we've often found that the, the students really help out in creating the class. What's fantastic about all of this is that this, these types of gaming technologies are then configured to be able to be deployed out onto the tablet, out onto the mobile, across the web. All of that's been taken care of for you. Meaning that once you're done, you can send it out, and not only can your students within your class uh, interact with, the, with, the, with what you've built, but students from around the world can also interact with it as well. A great example of a, 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 a university that's been using game technology is UCLA and the Ancient History Department. The Ancient History Department has taken the Roman Forum uh, and within, the, within their lesson process has confer, converted the Roman Forum into an actual game. I went online and searched for Roman Forum and brought up a fantastic article about the Roman Forum on Wikipedia. All the information that you would ever need is contained within here. There's fantastic imagery, there's fantastic, fantastic links. But let's think about this from a learning process and then let's switch over to what uh, UCLA has actually done. So they simply took the models uh, that they found out there, they'd already previously created, they had students helping out with the creation, and then this is the actual Roman forum as the individual is starting to walk through it. So if we, if we think back to the, the picture that I just showed you of Wikipedia, and we, we immediately come to here, you can see that the, the natural movement for the individual to walk through and explore really enhances the learning process. There are several examples of universities that are already out there creating a bunch of courses that they're, that they're not only using for their students, but they're making them available for everyone else. So you can imagine if you're a, a teacher and you don't want to create your own historical game, there's a ton of stuff that's already out there. A couple more great examples is uh, the, you can go to an area where you can already see the Sistine Chapel and be able to walk through it. It's freely available and your students are going to be more than capable of being able to probably show you how to use the environment. Um, Arkansas State University is taking a whole series of historical sites from around Arkansas and recreating them within a virtual environment. So kids from Australia, the UK and China, as well as their own students can go in and interact with them. So this is just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with, with gaming technology within education. There's a ton of different things that you can do. Um, and I see more importantly with the geography uh, and imagery that's coming back from the Mars Explorer, it's, it would be very easy to take our next geography lesson actually on Mars. Thank you, everyone.